Hey guys, so this one's going to be a little follow-up to the detailing hard surfaces video. We're going to play around with creating some stuff kind of like this. And it's following the same basic principles of the other video there where you want to detail your details for the most part. Create primary, secondary, tertiary shapes. Uh, but when you do this enough, you can actually end up with some pretty interesting stuff rather fast. And so you spend a couple hours doing this stuff. It's not really that hard to start making things like this. And so a lot of you guys are probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed looking at something like this, but it takes time. It's iteration. It starts simple. And so we're going to start simple here. Now, depending on what you're making, you might want to approach this in different manners. But uh, for this one in particular, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the screencast operators. I use custom keys, guys, and I'm using a bunch of selection methods that I've mentioned in a lot of videos, but select loops, rings, boundary loops, inner loop regions. I'll be using all that probably among other things and anything that's in green is a machine based add-on and uh, we'll be using hard ops and box cutter and all that as well so uh, just expect you to understand some of the basics of using blender and some of those tools this isn't really a beginner tutorial per se right, but you have a shape here right and you start working this thing a little bit come up with some interesting forms on it perhaps start doing some bevels okay and we're going to try to break this up uh, even more by adding asymmetry to it. So let's create a cube. Pull it out to the side here. Or make it a little bit smaller. Just do a big chamfer here. So chamfer is a one segment bevel. And these would be fillets if you're using CAD software where they're rounded. All right, but we can start doing things like this. And we can combine them together later on if needed, or split them apart, or do all kinds of fun stuff. So that's the point of doing it like this anyways. You want to use even segments as well. So like 8s and 10s and um, 6, things like that. So you can see we can get some interesting stuff going on rather fast like that. As a base form anyway. So shade it auto smooth. We can do Boolean unions real quick. We'll try to keep this as one solid piece for now might be better to split it up sooner rather than later but it's a little interesting how that works out because I think it's still better to do that manually as opposed to just using like slices or solidifies or things that you might see in some other videos but uh, you certainly can use those though if I had a bevel here I'll split it up a bit eight segments subtract that all right, so asymmetry can play a huge part in creating good-looking stuff. I know it's hard to get away from symmetry. It makes everything easier usually. But it can be really important by the end of the process of creating things. But uh, turning box cutter on now, we can go ahead and just um, start dicing this thing up if we want. We could use the ingon cutter or regular box cuts. It doesn't really matter. I personally don't like using the bevels in box cut all that much. So I'll shift click, go into edit mode, hit Alt Z, and start doing some things manually like that. My goal here with this at least, what I'm thinking when I'm going through this, is that I just want to get some flat surfaces on this area that we can actually maybe you know add additional details and work them further. And not have to worry about having bevels everywhere. Bevels can really sometimes mess you up. In uh, this modeling software, anyways, in Blender in particular, but other software maybe not as much. CAD, you know, you can always use CAD to create models as well. Plasticity, um, Fusion 360, Moin perhaps. But uh, for now, we're just using Blender. And you want to do things like this right where you just start adding interest on interest on interest and kind of read this as you're going think about all the design videos i did talking about just how you can break things up so if we have a flow going through here like this it might be fun to add a flow going through here like this on this back section right so let's go ahead and do that real quick we'll just use box cutter real quick we'll set it up right there bring it down shift click oh <laughs> box cutter fail okay Try that again shift click in edit mode, grab that corner, and let's try to match it a little bit, size-wise. Move it a bit. 
All right, so those little things can come into play quite a bit. You want to make sure that's trying to go through that area, right? And uh, if you want, you can try to line it up by looking at the grid underneath Alt-Z. You can see that'll get us pretty much on the money there. So uh, that'll bring us to another video at a certain point talking about semi-modular design. But it's um, basically, think of it like this. If you ever wanted to make something really crazy, like let's say this is a big starship or something, uh, we have like irregular edges around this area perhaps, right? But inside of here, you'll see there's still a grid. And we could set this grid up however we choose to see fit, if we want to use like four meter units or whatever the case. But you can start making your rooms based off of this, right, in your hallways. And so the only thing that would be unique is not necessarily these flat sections here, but would be these corners, potentially. These areas might not even be unique here because these could be broken into a modular piece, perhaps. But um, these areas like this. So that's where you get into semi-modular design. You might make a room that is its own thing here. So like we could still have maybe these would be the unique room sections, perhaps. But we could have a unique section here. These could potentially all start becoming the same thing all the way through. All right, so that's, I just wanted to talk about that real quick. It's kind of interesting. I'll have to erase this because uh, I think I went too many steps, but we'll see. Usually just control Z back on that, but all right. Anyway, so, but we can see what's going on here now. And that's good because we can add things like cylinders. If we want to use more or less segments, that's up to us. We can rotate those cylinders out. We can place them here. Uh, maybe we take this whole front section, pull it forward, and then bevel it all. Hit C to clamp it. A, M, merge by distance. That's going to get rid of the doubles at the front of it. We might need to scale it. S, shift, Y. Shade auto smooth, perhaps. Maybe we want something living in this area like this, right? We'd probably use a quad sphere as a base. It might even work out better. So just keep that in mind when you... Or playing with cylinders there or those kinds of shapes quad spheres oftentimes work very well in the case of the machine one here i might just take it down a little bit resolution this is a machine quad sphere machine tools quad sphere but um, you can use the blender extras and the rounded cube has a option in there to I'll set it up i'm going to delete that set it up as a quad sphere as well press f at the end there shade it auto smooth there you go so we could take things like this potentially, and just bully and union them together as well, if needed. You can see where that's kind of going now. And we still have box cutter to do things. So if we want to do more unions, we can. You, know, you don't have to just work in negative space. You can work in positive space. So if I shift click here, go into edit mode and do a big chamfer perhaps, we can also grab that piece and then do an array. Could have did this with box cutter itself, but I found that I have issues with that right now for some reason. Because the, uh, you know what, actually, let's take that all the way through. See what happens. And bring this bottom section down, maybe? A little bit? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. Do something like that maybe so that's a little bit more involved but it's different whatever the case and so we can just keep rolling with it whatever and add additional little elements in here let's do a cut on this one actually you know uh, we could do new objects too right here at the end press a to get access to that but we could just do new objects we don't always have to keep working on the base mesh, right? So if we wanted like a little hatch or something here, it's kind of a little detail or whatever the case. We can start doing just standard polygonal modeling, not think much about it. And you can always do like a cursor to selected, create a cube, go out on the side here. And this is just something I prefer doing where I Kind of line these things up manually. 
Get it about right. Grab that center section. So we'll take this. Shift select this. Actually, we don't even have to because we got the... Oh, yeah, we do. See the origin points here? If we left the origin point over here, we could just array it. Otherwise, we got to array around this origin point, right? So we can shift select. We can use mesh tools, radial array, and hold shift when clicking this. And now we can do this number. We'll radial array around that piece, basically. Right? And because this is a separate object, we won't end up dicing into this or cutting up this section here. So we can take these two and do a Boolean subtraction now, and we're better off for it, right? That we did it that way, as opposed to um, sleeving it the way it was. You can always do loop cuts in it still, maybe bring this up a bit. Not going to hurt nothing. I'm going to add a little chamfer to it or a bevel. That's fine. There we go. So now we just kind of play around with the designs here. I don't really care for this piece in the middle. I thought it was going to look cooler, but do that. These pieces here, I don't care for either, so I might redo that. It's okay to, you know, when you delete things, the booleans, you just might want to get rid of them. Uh, they turn red, so... But it's okay to do things like that, really. When you see something that's just not working, then just don't do it, right? Like, just give up on that idea and then uh, restart it, perhaps. I do like this side, the way it's going. My shift-click, go in edit mode. Scale that out. Uh, let's bevel that a little bit more there. Four segment bevel. Okay, so we got something going there. I really want something in here, but I'm not sure what. I guess we could just go kind of minimalistic with it. We'll shift click here. And then don't forget to skew things, guys. Skewing is huge. It makes everything look better. And you can still, you can see... Uh, this is now a solid piece, right? But we could take, say, this piece here. And maybe we do some box cuts on it. Not in edit mode. I don't like doing it in edit mode. So if we, if we were to go through and just start cutting this apart, you'll see that it cuts like that in there. Which might be something you want to do. It might not be. Who knows? I feel like that would be better if we brought it out, though. Which we wouldn't do on the shape itself. Just click that. We'll see what happens here if I do this. I'll run it through that bevel. Now be careful running edges through bevels, right? That's one thing about this software that it's a little bit more challenging in some ways. Shift T, you can taper. Go ahead and grab these. I'm, I still prefer manual bevels as much as possible. I use Mesh Machine if I need to change those later. Like maybe I don't have enough segments or I got the wrong amount of segments. Yeah. We'll use the Ingon Cutter here. We'll do Union. We'll take it out from... I really need to go from this corner. We'll have to move it, I think, after the fact. Oh, what is going on there? Oh, it's doing that. Um, let's see, where's this option at? It's it's a goofy option. Cyclic is set to open. We need it closed. I don't know how I keep changing that. There's a shortcut for it, and I keep hitting it, I think. But anyways, it's on there. So we can do it kind of small at first. Then we can shift-click. Edit, but you see, it's just a repetition thing. It's you're just doing this same process over and over and over again. So if we want to adjust the size here on this, we can now kind of move it into position where where we wanted it. And you know, don't forget you can just take your objects and do things like chamfers on them, perhaps, right? Slowly work these things back together, basically. Detailing the details. If you're wondering about the... I think you see now this one's set to draw a line. I don't know why it does that. Right. Must be me. Alright, so... Do something like that. 
Now do this for a couple hours. That's the main thing. Also, one of the benefits you get with manual bevels is you can do them in specific orders. So like right here, I could do that one first, and then I can do this one. And you'll see if we get these nice setups like this instead of having that crazy triangular end pole section going, which is nice. Um, and we can just do another box cut through this area, perhaps. Press E, and oh, let's try this again. E. Hit E twice, shift click. <laughs> Go all the way to the bottom. No, it's an accident, but we'll move it up. Let's see this top one. Pull this one out. All right. Yeah, sometimes you get into the cutting stuff so much so that you'll forget. If you're using the right amount of segments, you'll just fly through a bevel. And uh, that happens. That's where a mesh machine comes into play later on. You can just kind of undo those things or change the counts or whatever. Hmm, what's going on here? That bevel originally that ran all the way down the side goes to there. I, would, I don't really want to continue that. But I think that would be better if it was flattened right there anyways. So this base shape, oh yeah, we didn't leave the bevel. Okay, that's, that happens sometimes. We'll have to repair things later on, perhaps. That. And once again, we can do unions, box cuts. Make sure your object's selected. I have a bad habit of not doing that. I was hoping I could get a little bit more play out of that. Let's just shift click and see if I can't skew this or warp it or something to get that bevel to be more noticeable down there. Chamfer that one. You see, Chamfer does that. Machine tools, Alt A, align right. I wanted some depth to this, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to try to mirror or mimic this edge here going out. You could just press K and Z, do a knife cut. And you would think that would be a simple task, but you can see this becomes a non planar face. I mean, it is technically still simple. You just knife cut there. And you, you can do something like this of sorts. But trying to get this edge in alignment with all that is where it becomes a little bit of a problem. Not a big deal. You could probably just dissolve that. Huh? Maybe. No, not yet. Could if this is cut there, and you'd have a little bit of a, it would be going down a little bit. We could just bring it up and re-chamfer it, maybe. All right. We haven't done a union up with it yet. I guess I thought we did. But maybe we didn't. Oh, we did. Okay. This one here, let's take this whole segment on the side and just chamfer it a little bit. Not much. We don't need much on that one. All right. So when you see things like this, and you're like, man, this is a cool shape here. I want to just do an inset on it. And you're just like, oh, it's hard to do that, right? Um, you can actually press Q. Use mesh tools and face extract. Now, face extract's a little weird. It took me a while to figure out how to use this thing. Uh, but you click it, right? And when you hit space bar, hit shift or hold shift. And then it'll start insetting, okay? All right. When you hit space bar again, you can do extrude. You can push it down in there now. So it's already doing a Boolean subtraction. It kind of was set up with that in mind, I guess. And then, uh, which is great because now I can shift click on the edit mode. And if we wanted, we could go around and start um, taking these little areas. This is a solidified plane, by the way. So uh, when you bevel these, you'd have to hit Control B and V. You can bevel the vertices unless you apply that plane, perhaps, right? So if you wanted to bevel all those corners, you could still do that. That's what I was getting at. Uh, sometimes, you know, you still have things you got to get rid of a little bit. But you might need to clean it up, especially if you have a lot of bullions going on. These areas can become extremely messy in, in this particular 
section. There's a way to decimate it too while doing all that, but it's um, a decimation modifier after the fact, I think works technically. So we have that going like so. We have the solidify. I'm going to apply the solidify. So people are asking about that add on. It's called the modifier list add on. It's not really an original name, but it doesn't work with Blender 4 yet, I think. It's going to take some time until it gets updated, maybe. A lot of the add-ons broke with Blender 4, and it's probably my least favorite release of Blender, to be honest, but it's, uh, it is what it is. So You see that? That corner is getting very tight right there. I don't like that. So let's see if I can't inset a little. Those will cross each other. We'll hold control. We'll bring it up. You see when they cross each other, it goes weird. Grab them and press S and just scale them back the other way. Let's see if we can't get something going there. Uh, machine tools has a mesh machine has a tool for that, which does basically the same thing I think. But I don't have as much as much luck with that I think. So I'd rather just do this and then eyeball it, kind of back into position a little bit. And you can try other things like loop tools and then do spacing which might help that out a bit. Um, there's also this area, you might be able to get away with doing um, the set flow add-on. You might set, might be able to set flow. If not on the whole thing, at least on the interior edges here, you might get away with that. You see, rounds it out pretty nice. And uh, I have a feeling that this edge at the top here, let's see if I can get a hold of it again. This edge is just not in alignment. And it needs to go to one direction or the other. I think it's the right on that one. Yep. And uh, this one would go to the top. And I would probably space this more appropriately. Right. And this is where um, you might want to use that set flow add on for sure. Okay. Just the three in the middle. Set flow. Boom. You can see how that worked out. Now, it does look like it made it non manifold, or excuse me. Not planner here at the top. And I don't know exactly what I can do about that. Where's my handle here for this face? It's somewhere in here. It's like uh, right there, maybe? That's a fun one. Forward slash real quick. I can't see it. It goes by like area. So it's one of these, there you go, those little dots. It's kind of weird sometimes Blender does that. But I can align these to the top. That'll make it all planar again in that direction. So, And trying to alt middle click on the cutters is a little challenging too. So yeah, if you didn't know that, you can do, you can do alt middle click. Yeah, I got it's still off somehow. I don't know what's going on. Might just need a weighted, weighted normal. It might actually be flat, but it's just bad triangulation. So, yeah, okay, it's it's fine with a weighted normal. Usually, I try not to add those until the very end, but sometimes it's good to just check, I guess. And so, there you go. That's how you do that, right? You you start working. An object like this, you start whittling away at it. Um, you can make additions, subtractions. You can do slices as well if you need to. Um, slices are always fun. But you just want to keep looking at it and determining, like, what can you do to maybe improve this shape? What kind of other shapes can you create to make this shape even better? And little details and nuanced things. That can take place all over basically. So like just a box cut through here. Shift clicking. You know, maybe something like that, right? Nothing that says you can't do that. You can play around with it too. Like you can see if uh, pushing it forward or backwards would make it look nicer. You try doing an ingon cut, slicing through, slicing out. Maybe you stop a little short on that one. Shift click it. And then now you could go and bevel these edges. See what I'm saying? 
in here, maybe we want to uh, just shift right click, place the 3D cursor. Here's a little tip about the 3D cursor, by the way, and a lot of your other tools. If you go to your key map, you could look up any tool. So if we look up 3D cursor, and you'll see that shift right mouse button is right here. You can align this to the geometry. Normally it's set to none, I think, or view or something by default. And so if I exit that, okay, it's set to the view by default. You see how it's grayed out? You can modify a lot of your tools this way. I'm not joking with this either. Like you can do bevels. Here's control B, right? You can modify a bunch of stuff by default behavior anyways. You have to save... Either save your, I think it's save your preferences, uh, but it you might have to save your start file too. Uh, anyways, so but you can do that for a lot of things like knife tools, um, right there. You can do that for insets, right there. So you can see my inset set to W, but I have some things on by default. So if you're wondering how some of this is going, the way it's going, that's the trick right there. Okay, you can just set custom kind of um, old presets if you would. Now, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's, it actually hurts you in the long run. So you just have to play around with them one at a time and kind of get a feel for which one does which and, or what. And we'll do this one at 8, 2, why not? Um, but the idea of that is when I shift right click now, my cursor lines up to the geometry. All right, so a lot of times you see how it's like up and down, left and right. It doesn't always get it right, but it almost always does. I think it goes off local orientation is what it's doing. So it actually works out really well. You see, it's like lining up to the normals of the, of the object too. So if I want to shift right click, press shift A, create cylinder, I can set the cylinder to align to 3D cursor and just scale it. See? And I can do that pretty much anywhere too. So that's that's where it's what makes it so awesome because now it's like 3D cursor, scale. You see, now you want to do an array later on. Right. That makes life so much easier. Now, machine tools, of course, will let you shift S and align cursor to object, and it adopts the rotation of that edge. Right, So it's like a more specific version of that, basically. Uh, which is good, but sometimes it's not desirable. So, whatever the case there. Go through this, and inset and hold control. Scale. Inset, extrude, scale. Inset, extrude, scale, and uh, I'm just going to run a bevel on it, but you'd want to go through and change each one of those edges, perhaps. And I think you get the idea here now at this point. Um, an otherwise simple object is starting to become much more involved, basically. So we're going to do base shape and cut here to there. Hold control. Well, yours should snap by default. You'll have to hold control to disable the setup there where it snaps like that. I like to hold control to enable it, so I set it backwards. Also, I'm using the simple pie if you're wondering um, about that with the uh, box cutter add on. So, all I want to do is select like this edge here. So, you can select them in this view, but it's hard to tell when you have them selected. I just want to position it about correct and then do a little bevel on it. And we'll do um, six or four on these ones, I think. Let's do fours. See, I can still select them. Just using the box selector. The box selector is really good, in my opinion, compared to a lot of the other tools, perhaps. These two would look good if they're the same. Uh, but you can copy values and paste them if you want to get things more precise, anyways. So, and we have that going. And we could, we could have maybe did this a little bit different, where we had like little cuts here to make this a trapezoid that's going in the opposite direction, perhaps. We could still do that. We would have to just go back and rework that one, or just start it over. Might be easier. But you can see how this works out, right? Is this cutting there? No, it's not. It's cutting the cutter over there. Doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, see, we could do things like that perhaps, right? And let's make sure we get it over there. I don't know why it's not starting over there. I mean, I guess it's because it's orthographic, but it seems like it would still start over there. Anyways, um, 
I'm just going to cut that real quick, just like that. Okay, so we can try to knock out the other one in the middle and see if we can't just kind of get them about lined up. It would be nicer if we could do this all like as like knife cuts almost. Instead of having to eyeball it like this, we could bake. Like there's another kind of way of doing this, which technically still works and it's easier in some ways, but it also... Um, which one's this? No, that's the side one. That's not the one we're gonna do. We need this one. There you go. I don't like doing it this way personally, but um, whenever I have to do booleans on things that are booleans, right? I don't really care for them. And so I don't like doing it like this, but let's see what I'm talking about. Just kind of eyeballing it. Probably should use control there. Let's shift double click. Go into edit mode. We can retweak this a little bit. Get it all just right. We'll keep that one thin for just a second. Bring that one down. Yeah, I feel like this one just has to keep running like that, doesn't it? And you can align these with machine tools, by the way. So, like, later on, you're like, these need to go on the bottom. Boom. You see? Stop. We're done with those, right? We can start aligning things super fast this way. And it just works. And so, it's, it's no point in getting too upset about these things, generally speaking. I'm not going to bevel the ones in the middle just yet. Just the ones on the outside. So this one, when we bevel this one, we can copy that value, hit Control c grab this one down here, start to bevel, now hit Control v we'll get the same size basically, alright? Alright, cool. Alright, so let's do an in-gun cut. We could do a box cut, but we'll do an in-gun cut, because why not? And we want just like right through here to be cut. You see, and this is where you're going to have issues with trying to line up the scale of things, possibly, but like the width of that area. And this is why I don't really care for this. I prefer doing like a plane, typically. I think that would be a better way of going about doing it, is you create the plane first, and then you do these cuts before you even solidify anything or you extrude it. Um, and then that would just help you out with getting, like you could bevel that edge, that cut in that area, and then that would get it just perfect, but you bevel both of them at the same time. But this still works, and it's not too bad, ultimately. It's pretty decent. Uh, you know, we can edit these things as well. So I'm going to take this back face here. I'm just going to bring it in. So it's a little bit closer. So this is going to help me with... Um, when I do a loop cut here. Okay, so bring this one out a little bit. When I loop cut down the middle, I can do a big chamfer. Now I can press inset and hold control. We can push it in or we can push it out. We can do things like this still, right? Hopefully we don't have any major errors here. I'm not showing you the wrong thing here, but I'm gonna inset it, hold control, and push it out like that. So you can start detailing the little interior sections of things like that as well. Right. And this process continues and you just go through this as fast as you want. For a couple hours at least to get something kind of going that looks rather complicated. Um, but you could spend, you know, depending on what you're working on, you could spend days trying to make something that's really it's like out of this world. You know, complicated looking and whatnot. Yeah, so lots of lots of areas to still work, right? Like we could do this phase section, this section, we could work this section. And I, I think you get where that's going. So, you know, even after you establish the big primaries like this and you've worked it for a little bit, sometimes it's good just to look at it and start brainstorming about what you want to do for the whole piece overall, right? And really think about design as you're working and not just, you know, making random cuts. You know, find a good little stopping point perhaps like this. And I just use the annotation tool, but you can set the annotation tool to be um, on the surface. You set it to something like black if you want, and you'll want to turn 
uh, the x-ray off for it. So it has x-ray on by default. You can turn that off here. You could also use a grease pencil, which in some ways the grease pencil is better. Uh, it allows you to just kind of work with it in different ways, right? Uh, but this is just kind of a temporary quick way of doing things as well. Now, I have run into problems with this before where you will end up losing your lines sometimes. Like I've saved files and went back into Blender and all my lines were gone. So that might happen to you. Just use this as a temporary thing. Don't get too caught up in it. Like think about, you know, like what would you like to see happen in this area? Like maybe this needs like a little bolt that comes out here or something, right? Who knows? And see with the grease pencil, you could do that. I think you could do it with this one too. Let's see. You could use the 3D cursor as the default plane to draw on. So you can shift right click. Watch this, ready? Now the 3D cursor will do things a little bit even different than that. Like you can actually draw in 3D with the 3D cursor, right? But you can see that's all going to be at that same height as that 3D cursor. So we can start to do things like this at least. Which I think is really interesting. Uh, sometimes it, you get a little... doesn't quite <laughs> sit on the surface. That happens too. I don't know why. Maybe it's a little too close to it or something. Or, I don't know. It's rotated. I guess we have to draw a flat in that case. Because, yeah, we're not using surface now. I thought I was on surface. Part. There you go. Yeah, 3D cursor will kind of let you do all of it at the same time. Which, I guess we should just do that since I'm talking about it so much. Let's see. Create. Or 3D cursor. Grease pencil. Where is it? I know it's in here, a greasy pencil. We're going to do a blank one. Okay, and the blank one by default uses materials and set the black so it's not too big of a deal. You can see we can set it to surface. Um, oh, this is that, still that one. Let's go to draw mode with the greasy pencil selected. And you'll see it's set to, let's see where it's at. It's been a while since I opened it. Oh, it's up here now. All right, so it's a uh, surface. You want to change that to whatever you need it to be, 0 0.02 maybe. So we have that. And you can see we can do front size, top cursor. We also have guides, by the way, which is cool. Um, for now, that'll work. All right, but here's the thing. We can use surface, but we can also use stroke. And we can do first point or end points, um, or all points, which is really interesting. Uh, so we can literally, we'll see if it works here. I don't think it's going to work with the annotation tool, though. So let's do a drag out from here. Okay, that didn't work out. Let's try. It's using the pencil. Let's use the ink pen. Turn the strength up to max, change our size accordingly by pressing F and Shift F. Okay, and that's not working the way I thought it was going to. So let's just use surface first. It's not paying attention to the uh, the tool there, so we'll we'll have to work with it, I think. Let's shift right click here, we'll redo those. Let's get rid of the annotation that's in the way. I don't know if I had to go back here, but we, we are. Now we go to the grease pencil. Now we can see what we're doing at least. Set the surface right now. And okay, see how it snaps to the surface. We can do uh, 3D cursor still. So we should be able to draw to the 3D cursor. You see it, it goes based off the view as well. We could probably change that behavior. I'm just I'm pretty sure we could, but and we could change this to um stroke now and we should be able to grab from one piece of a stroke to another piece of a stroke and it should connect them oh yeah it did it's not quite the way that i was expecting but it did connect them okay you see you can draw kind of like in 3d space with it it's a little bit interesting it's kind of hard to get started but uh, so yeah anything that you ever want to do like that that's a possibility like if we had another stroke back here we could draw to that area you see 
And it's based on perspective too, which is the wildest part about it because you, if you draw the curve correctly as if it was in perspective, it'll actually show up correctly. If you draw the perspective wrong, it could give you the wrong, the wrong setup there, which is uh, something I always found super amusing. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. Can't quite get that one apparently. Yeah, a little challenging to use. So this is why I usually don't use it because it's more involved. I mean, if I really wanted to uh, start playing around with the idea of creating forms with the, the the tool, I would. Otherwise, annotation, I think, is the happy medium here. It's much faster. And setting it to surface. Oh, you know what? Look, only endpoints, huh? It has an endpoint option, too. Mm. Not sure how that works out, but it's there. You don't feel to play with it, so... an x-ray off all right so now we're good i think oh another problem with this one is it doesn't erase very well sometimes it's like man i don't know why it does that but as long as you're using it temporarily it's fine it's it's not a big deal so you can start thinking like i want to cut here with a circle here and we can get back to literally just drawing out our thoughts of what we want to do to this whole thing and then we can go do the booleans later you know what i'm saying it's very simple of an idea. Like maybe you want some patterns in here. Sometimes you see how it's like hard to rotate um, because we're at least I'm using a tablet right now, and it's kind of disorienting using a tablet because I'm used to sculpting with it. But you can change your view mode. Press page down, and you have machine tools. Uh, I forgot the name of this pie menu. It, it's like the view pie or something like that. Um, you should be able to, I guess it happens when you're in this selection here. Okay, yeah. You can see we could turn it from turntable to uh, trackball. What that does is it behaves more like ZBrush now. We could spin it. Okay, so if you're ever going to do some like sculpting, I still got to do a hard surface sculpting video, but if you ever want to do some sculpting and you're using a tablet, that's the way to go. But yeah, you can start thinking like, do I need screws, bolts? Um, what else could you possibly put in here that would make it look more interesting? And it's way quicker than doing the bullions, right? But you can see how, how much better it is when you try to approach this as you've... Um, as you've already gone through it once, you know, like you got something to draw on now at least, so you start really thinking about how you want to maybe work in an area. Maybe you don't want to do that, you know. Maybe you want to drag that all the way through, cut down to the here, so you can start imagining those kinds of things, right? Maybe you got to round this edge out. You can kind of critically look at your stuff. Also, this annotation tool, I want to mention something. Uh, you can do more annotations. You can set different colors. Right? And so often, if you guys want to send, like you, if you're modeling and you're with a good group of modelers, you can send your models to each other. And you can have someone go through and grade it. Right? using just red like that it's a super effective way of working because like now you can just say like whenever there's like topology issues like i'm still designing but you would be like well uh, let's see let's see if we can find an error or something that's not good like uh, maybe this here you know like you can go through and you can just mark things you can set the 3d cursor somewhere and now you can just say like should bend right you can grade each other's work this way and leave little notes everywhere for each other. Okay? That's just something you could do. And then you send the file back, you know, the notes right there somewhere in 3D space. So you can just say like, oh, okay, it should be all right. Um, now other software that I've used, um, you wouldn't annotate using just a pen like that. You'd have like little text box and little dots you can place and drop in places. 
And um, so that kind of annotation system, I think, is better than the pen. But this is still nice. It's going to give you that old school, like, your teacher gave you an F, and that's they're marking everything wrong type deal, right? So it'll make you feel really good when your buddy sends that back. But um, overall, yeah, that's it for this video, guys, I think. I think you get the idea. You just keep running with this until uh, you can't do any more on it, maybe. And you can create some rather complex, fun stuff very quickly. And also, try not to go overboard. I I'm going to just say this. It's easy to just keep piling more and more and more and more stuff onto a surface. Um, you can always remove it later on, potentially. Uh, but just keep in mind, simpler is better a lot of times. Every time you make additional cuts, you might have to do a detail pass on every one of those additional cuts. Now, when it comes time to turn this from a low poly, or excuse me, turn this into a high poly, and then maybe make a low poly to match it, um, you could you could run into some issues. Uh, you might even take something like this and do like a bevel bake on it or whatever, bevel shader bake, but it just depends on how you want to work with something like this at the end of it. And so I'll make a video about that kind of stuff later on. But hopefully this helps you out at least when it comes time to, um, you know, just work on your models and just see. You now they start simple. I haven't detailed any of the bottom here. And it's, it's already starting to look pretty wild here in this particular area. So we could definitely keep pushing that further. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I will check you out in the next one. All right? Take care.